So I want to talk about a few key surface features of the sun and relate that to what's going on inside and what's going on with the sun's magnetic field. So the first feature is um, the granules on the photosphere. So if we zoom in on the photosphere, we see something that looks kind of like, um, I don't know, oatmeal. And these granules are the bright regions surrounded by kind of dark edges. And so my question for you is, why do the granules appear bright? All right, so the granules appear bright because they consist of material that's hotter than the surrounding region and they are rising up. So there's convection happening in the layer underneath the granules, that's the convection layer. And the hot material is rising, the cool material is sinking. And because it's hotter, um, it burns, or sorry, glows brighter, uh, you know, according to temperature to the fourth power. So my follow-up question for you, and I don't have a poll for this, so you'll just have to volunteer. How can we actually measure that there is motion going on here and that the granules are not just, you know, bright, but that they are actually coming from gas rising and then cooling and sinking. So if we look at the um, bright regions, which we expect to be rising up because, okay, chain of logic here, they're bright, which must mean they're hotter than the surrounding regions. So we would expect that that's hot material rising up. If material is rising toward us, then we would expect to see a blue shifted spectrum. And then the cool edges is where the material has cooled and is sinking. And if it is in fact sinking, moving away from us, then we should measure a red shift there. So we should measure blue shift from the bright regions and red shift from the dark regions. And so that's why in my cartoon of the view from just underneath the photosphere, I've illustrated the rising up material as blue, not because it's cool, but because it is blue shifted. So yeah, that's exactly what we can do. Uh, train a telescope on a small region of the granule and then look around and actually map out and confirm that it is blue shifted in the bright spots, red shifted in the dark spots. So we did that and this is how we know that there is convection happening in the convective layer. So this is our evidence that there's convection in that layer. Okay, so granules are a relatively small surface feature. The width of a given granule is um, like approximately the size of the state of Texas. Um, but sunspots are a much larger surface feature that can be much larger than entire planet Earth. And these are dark regions on the sun's surface. So a question for you, why do sunspots appear dark? All right, so the decoy answer here was B. That's also the most popular answer it appears. So yes, sunspots are associated with magnetic fields, but that's not the reason they're dark. Well, it kind of is actually, but the prime, the you know, physical reason that they're dark is because they're cooler than the surrounding regions. All right, so the sunspots are cooler than the surrounding region. Um, they're large, as you can see. Uh, they appear like they interrupt the kind of general uh, pattern of granulation that we see on the rest of the photosphere. And I guess to follow up, if we were measuring the black body curve of a sunspot uh, relative to the black body curve of the rest of the photosphere, which one of these would be from the sunspot? Okay, I'm seeing the most answers for B, which is correct. And I'm wondering why. So what is the reasoning behind why we would measure the black body curve B for a sunspot and A for the rest of the photosphere? So we would want to look at the peak wavelength to figure out the temperature. So looking at the peak wavelength for curve B here, it occurs farther to the red, whereas the peak wavelength for curve A occurs farther toward the blue. And since the peak wavelength determines the temperature with red being cooler and blue being hotter, then B has to come from a colder object than A. The total height of the peak is also related to the temperature only because the luminosity is related to the temperature. But the best way to get the temperature by itself is the peak wavelength. The reason for this is because the size of an object can also affect its, the total energy it puts out.
right? So this goes back to the idea of the red star versus the blue star. All right, so yes, B would be the sunspot. And I would say the primary piece of information for this would be to look at its peak wavelength is farther to the red. So sunspots, they are, um, I guess a feature that's been noticed since the time of Galileo. So Galileo in 1612 published a, uh, a bunch of images of sunspots and noticed that they uh, rotate in a particular way. So based on your reading, and if you didn't do the reading and I'm not sure how emphasized this was in the text, so it's okay if you guess, what would happen if you saw this pattern of three sunspots stacked on top of each other vertically after a few days, how would the, that pattern of sunspots then appear? Okay, I'm seeing most votes for A, which is right. And I wanna point out why I think that it would be surprising if you didn't know what the sun was basically. So I ran out of oranges, therefore my sun is a lemon today. And so if, um, if you have a solid body that has three sunspots on it, and then that solid body is rotating, then all the dots move together. Right, so if you imagined that the sun rotates on its axis the same way the earth does as a solid object, then you would expect to see something like C after a few days. But instead what we actually see is that it's like A, the sunspots near the equator of the sun have moved farther in the same amount of time than sunspots at a higher latitude. So this is called differential rotation, meaning that the rotation of the sun is different at different latitudes. And specifically, sunspots at the equator move faster than the ones at higher or lower latitudes. And the way we actually measured this was using sunspots. Um, this is how we know that the sun is a ball of gas and not some sort of solid body. And uh, here's the images from Galileo that showed this the first time. This was a big freaking deal when he discovered that the sun uh, rotated because at that time it was assumed that the sun was a perfect body and that it had a special place within the universe. And so the revelation that the sun actually moves and changes over time uh, was a big surprise that kind of shook up the worldview of the entire community at that time. So you're gonna be like Galileo and track sunspots to measure the differential rotation of the sun. 